All right, let's try that again. That actually looks like it may be better. Hang on just a second. I'm going to start refresh again. I'm so sorry that I had to do that, you guys. Um, but I had a little technical malfunction right before I started, and so apparently when I rejoined my video, it didn't uh, like it, and it didn't get back to horizontal like it was, and boy, was that going to be hard for you guys to watch the way it was. So, I see you're joining. Thanks, Mary. I think, I think right side up is better. Almost always, that's the best way to do a video. Hey, Karen. Hey, Jean. Hey, other Karen. Hey, Susan. Thank you so much. I appreciate your patience with me. Apparently I'm having some issues. I'm going to play with this just a little bit more and see if I can get a little better view. Man, I'm having some trouble tonight. Goodness gracious. It's almost as if I don't know anything about technical stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get there. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so the card that I gave you a sneak peek of this morning is this card. And when you turn it up, you can see it's a bridge. Now, I've seen a bunch of these cards on Pinterest, and I just had not done one because it kind of bamboozled me, okay? So then I went out and I watched a few uh, YouTube videos. There's lots of them out there. And I believe Jan Connors is the one that I sort of based my bridge function, kind of the structure of my card on. And I'll have a link to her blog tomorrow on the website. So we're going to make this. It's not very difficult once you kind of break it down into pieces. Um, thanks, Marianne. Hey, Karen. Uh, you should go sit out on the porch with Perry, Karen. Absolutely. Say hello to him and give him a hug for me. You can watch tomorrow. It will always be here. Uh, hey, Eunice from British Columbia. Thank you for joining. So I decided to use the new Sea of Textures set. It's got a stamp set and then a bundled framelits. And I went back to a lovely little carrying over set called Magical Mermaid because why wouldn't you want to have a mermaid in your little undersea diorama? All right, and then of course I made an envelope and what's kind of cool about these is they lay down flat just like that and they fit in a regular old a2 envelope. How cool is that? And so that someone has a place to put a signature, I've put a panel on the back and a little more stamping and embellishing back there because you can never have too much bling. So let us go ahead and get started. I'm going to set this aside and set these aside as usual. And aren't you glad? I've already done some pre-cutting. We're going to add a few things that I didn't put on there. This is our Magical Mermaid Lady, and she is heat embossed in gold, just on plain whisper white, and then I fussy cut her. Here we have a few die cuts. These are all from the under, under the Sea Framelits. This little guy is a Magical Golden Octopus. He is heat embossed again on whisper white, and cut with his matching die. Remember. Remember the Star Trek emblem? There it is, still there. All right, so let's set those aside. And then we have a bunch of cardstock and DSP. Don't be freaked out by this because it's just not that big a deal. This is DSP to put on my envelope for later. Now, the card front itself is the base, I'm sorry, the card base itself is um, four and a quarter, although that doesn't really look like four and a quarter, does it? That looks a whole lot like five and a half, so let me fixate that just a second. That would have been a really weird card. <laughs> that would have been a really weird card. See how much better that looks? And all we're gonna do is pull out our Simply Scored, and you just score at one and a quarter and two and a half from each end, okay? And you can do higher math and not flip your your uh, shoot, not flip your card stock, but you know it's late and I don't want to do that, so I just flipped it 180 degrees. 
And that right there is the magic, is magic step number one. Uh, Sue, this ruler is a Tim Holtz ideology ruler. And it is wonderful because it has a beveled edge and it's got eighth and sixteen or eighth inch and quarter inch marks on it, which is lovely. Really lovely. I love this ruler. I actually even have a second one sitting in my stash just in case I do something goofy like break that one or lose it. Hey Donna. Hey Mary from Washington State. All right, so we have now scored our card base at one and a half, or one and a quarter and two and a half, and then one and a quarter in from this direction and two and a half. And so then we're just gonna make a pretty simple Z fold like that. All right. And we're going to give that a little burnish with our bone folder. Okay, like that. There it is, the card base of the bridge. Now, we're gonna start a little bit of putting together. We're gonna put some stuff together. This takes a lot of piece, little pieces, but that's okay, because we like little pieces, don't we? Oh, for the love of Pete. I did an awesome job of cutting cardstock, didn't I? Ah, here we go, I see what I did. All right, let me get a couple more pieces of this cut because I can never show you too many times how to cut cardstock. This is important for you to know. Um, we're making these little mats and they are one and an eighth inch wide by four and an eighth, eighth inch long and you're going to want four of them. So we'll just cut one and an eighth. There's two, one and an eighth. There's three, and they want to be, just making sure, four and three eighths inch long. All right, so you could do this without matting everything, but I kind of like stuff matted, as you probably are aware from seeing as many of my cards as you've seen, right? I like stuff matted. All right, so let's go ahead and go get one more cut. And I better, because I'm batting a thousand here tonight, I better keep a little bit of cardstock, huh? Where I can reach it so you don't have to murmur too much. I don't want you to have to do too much of murmuring, too much of murmuring. Yes, Mary, you may want to take some uh, notes, but I will put sort of abbreviated instructions on my website tomorrow. You'll see those as well as all the card cuts. So here's what's going to happen. Goodness gracious sakes alive. Yes, I borked the borkin bork it out. Borkin borkin out of that, didn't I? Oh, well that's easier to recover from. Jeez, people, I'm sorry. Goodness. You know, the only problem with having a three-day weekend and and thinking and being really productive, like you get really productive and so you think to yourself, self, you are way ahead of the game. And then it turns out, no, no, uh-uh, you're not. So all I'm doing here is cutting the four and three-eighths inch pieces of cardstock down to four and one-eighth inch pieces of cardstock which is what I should have cut in the beginning. So, you know, it is what it is. It's like a Sunday or like, you know, Monday or something like that. I don't know what it is. Uh, but the good news is, for those of you who are following the saga of Wilbur, he is back. He actually, so tonight he was apparently hungry. Normally, the last couple of three days and nights, I really haven't seen him at mealtime. I've just known that he has come and gone because all of a sudden I, I get back to the barn and his tub is kind of tipped up. And I know that he's come and eaten. And, but tonight he was there waiting, wagging his tail like, hey, lady, we're starving out here. Just in case you didn't realize it, we are starving out here. And so 
I went to the feed bin with him following me, sort of. And see, at this point now I'm measuring because I think I've forked this. Yeah. He followed me and I thought, well, I'm going to make him work for it. So I kind of crouched down and I sprinkled the food into his tub. And y'all, he came, he was about two feet from me. Until And he finally was like, oh dear, I can't do this. I just can't do it. It's too much. It's just too much. So you see what I have here is this is the um, Tranquil Textures DSP. And I have two coordinating designs. And let's look at our prototype. You'll see I've used two on the front and then two on the inside that are the same. And then the one on the back is the same as the front, which kind of gives it a cohesive look. Yeah? Okay. Just say, yes, Mary, it certainly does. Mm -hmm. Does he like his bit? You know, I don't even know. I, I, I think he's been on it once, but I really think it's too hot in the barn for him. The barn is warm. I've got fans on the horses at night, um, which they like, but I just think he gets too hot. And so I think he's sleeping out in the woods like he was a real pig. And uh, no, Marianne, you're far from the only person that messes up cutting. This is, I know you're going to be shocked. I hope you're all sitting down. The first time I've made a bridge card. So you may be seeing more than one bork tonight. But, you know, it's good to know that you can recover from a bork. It's just paper and cardstock, right? I think we get kind of head up. I know I do. And I don't know why. Maybe because I think, gosh, that, boy, that strip of DSP was probably one entire cent. And I ruined it. I ruined it. Yeah. So all I'm doing is giving these a little mat with some liquid glue so that we're ready to go. Now, here's just a tip. If you are using paper that has a direction up or down. Um, I like to be sure that I get them all in the same direction so that it looks like I meant to do what I did. Um, is it is it the end of the world if they don't? Nope, probably not. But I like it that way. It suits me. All right. How does it flatten? I'll show you in just a second, Jane. And that was always the part that I got, I couldn't figure until I started watching some of the videos was how in the world do you get that thing to flatten down? Well, when this flattens like so, it's thick. I mean, there's no doubt it's thick because I've gone kind of crazy with the decorations. But this distance from here to here is five and a half. And then this is four and a quarter. And that is the size of a medium envelope. And I know it fits because I even tested it. Why did I test it? Because I wanted to be sure that when I put a piece of DSP on the back, I still had room and I did. So it really does work. And we're gonna show you how to construct the cake here in just a minute. Okay, so I have my four panels and I am, well, I have one more panel to do and that's the back panel. And you know what I did is, you remember me cutting those new strips? Well, that was my that was my mat for this. So I need a four and an eighth by two and seven eighths. And let's get our trimmer back. And let's get oh wait, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Hold your breath, people. Hold your breath. <laughs> Where'd that piece of paper just go? Here, right here. <laughs> ah, you have to laugh, right? I mean, you can laugh or you can kind of cry. I'm gonna go ahead and laugh because I think you guys are still gonna like me, I hope. Okay, two and seven eighths by four. Two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. See, when you know you're messing up, you really, really want to measure twice. 
And then perhaps you'll only have to cut three times. So. All right, there we go. So that is the back of the card. The back of the front, as it were. Yes, ma'am, I am, in fact, human and keeping it real. No doubt about it. No retouching will happen to this video. It will go straight up like it is. <laughs> All right. Here we go. There we go. What's fun about these cards is that once you've got the basic cake made, the card base, then you can decorate it and you can do so many things. And it's really kind of fun. Now, there is no doubt that this is not your everyday card. You are probably not gonna sit down and make like 12 of these in a day. If you do, please tell me, cause I'm gonna, <laughs> more power to you. I'll be very impressed by that. Cause it does take a minute to do, but it turns out in reality, the most time consuming part is simply cutting your pieces and your parts. And once you get that done, and you kind of have broken the code, if you will, the code that says, now how in the world does that work? Once you see the engineering, it's like, oh, I get it. All right, so that's on the back. Then we're gonna put these dark ones on the inside to kind of frame our little scene. And I try to kind of line up the, line them up a little bit. Like that. Okay, so when I made this prototype the other day, I just made a basic bridge card. And then I thought, you know, how cool would it be to get some dimensional decorations on the inside? And so I, after the fact, added this strip right here. Can you see it in there, down there? So that it holds, it's holding those um, corals to give kind of a diorama. So today I'm gonna try that, and I'm gonna try to do it ahead of time. And we're gonna see how that works. So we're kind of experimenting a little bit. Cause it was, I will confess, just the tiniest bit awkward doing it after the bridge car bridge was already put on. All right. And Unamas. Unamas. Assemble. Oh, Eunice, good for you. Good for you. I am impressed by that. And I and you would have to just make them straight up assembly line. Straight up. And hopefully you had maybe a little help to with some of the cutting and the die cuts. All right, so there's the basic card. Next up, we're gonna make the little center strip. And on the website, I'm gonna tell you that it's one inch wide by um, like three and a half, and that is about right. So basically it is just that distance, which together is about three inches, plus a half an inch for some scoring. So let me show you that. This one's a little narrower, but that is okay. So we're making it three and a half inches long. And then all I'm doing is at a quarter of an inch, I'm scoring, and then I'm gonna turn it over and do another quarter inch from the other short side. All right. And I did that so that I can fold those back like that and then we're going to adhere it in the inside of the card about halfway down. It's not rocket science and it doesn't, it's not that critical. We're gonna do it about halfway down just like that so that we have a place to put our little goodies, okay? And I think I'm gonna do it the same way I did when I made the card. We're gonna do it after the fact, I think. That'll be fine. So I've got that. So let's make the bridge. This is what I'm calling the bridge, okay? The part that holds it together. And for that, I did, 
I did a piece of fresh fig because that's kind of the color that uh, coordinates. And then I did another mat, so one and an eighth by five and three eighths. One and an eighth by five and three eighths. All right, here we go. You guys excited for Friday? Anybody? Anybody? Next Friday is what? Yes, the new catamalog. The new catamalog. See you later, Robbie. Have fun with your company. <laughs> Eunice, no help. Thank goodness. Exactly. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the bridge and I'm going to mat it and then I'm going to put another piece on it with of DSP with some decorations. with some decoration. So this is some more soft sea foam on the fresh fig. You know what's so fun about all of these colors is these are colors that I probably together wouldn't, just by myself, I wouldn't put them together because I wouldn't think of it. But when you look at the DSP, you get all of it. You see the soft sea foam, you see mint macaron, tranquil tide, fresh fig, balmy blue and then of course the white and so then you know that works those colors all work together so thank you to the su designers for helping us out now i am going to take from my magical mermaid stamp set this cute little border image and i'm going to use my stamp jig y'all i'm not going to quit using this i am just assuming that you have one and if you don't have one, you need to get one between now and the 30th of May so that you do not miss out. Because I do not wish for you to miss out at all on this. All right? Because you need a stamp and a jig, I promise. All right. So I'm just going to put my, car, my stamp on there. And in Fresh Fig. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Mary, I understand that completely. Again, that is why I am a demonstrator. Because if I didn't get that 20 or 25%, 25% now, I wouldn't be able to buy what I want. So all I'm gonna do is take, this is a, another piece of, ah, the same exact DSP, only the back. And I'm just going to stamp that image, which happens to perfectly fit on there in some fresh fig. Okay. Like that. Okay, and then I'll line up the image coming this way some more, a little bit more. Get it kind of straight, sort of kind of straight. Sort of kind of, that's the card making version of a swag, which is, well, you know what a wag is, right? A wild, you know what, guess. And a swag is a scientific wild guess. All right. So with that done, I'm going to use a little more of my liquid glue and put it on my... Hi, Anne. Thank you for joining. Your husband made you a stamp positioner. That was nice of him. That was nice of him. Have you ever gone off to do something and come back to your table and found your liquid glue sitting open? I have. Not right now, so I'm not exactly sure why it's um, borking up on me, but you know, I think it's just part of the game tonight. Okay, see what we're gonna do is we're gonna get another one. More than one way to skin this cat. All right, let me, it's brand fresh. It's gonna have that new glue smell. Okay, here we go. And for the moving part, I use the liquid glue for the matting and, and the DSP and adhering the panels. But for the moving parts, and I'm calling the bridge piece a moving part, we're going to use tear and tape adhesive. Okay, because it's going to get a lot of exercise as people try to figure out 
How in the world did she, how did she do it? All right, now, you'll see here, I've got my, uh, let's go ahead and put our mermaid on. I was gonna change that up, but I think I'm gonna do it the same way because I actually kind of like it. So let's do our mermaid right quick. Here's our mermaid. And I, remember, I told you at the beginning, she is heat embossed in gold on Whisper White, and then I just fussy cut her. And we're gonna use some markers to color her. I'm gonna start with the Ivory Stampin' Blend. Remember, these are back, guys. They're back, they're back, they're back, yay! The current colors are in stock and available to be ordered, so that's kinda cool. This is Ivory, but remember the tip. If you are coloring on embossed, uh, an embossed image with a heat embossing. This embossing reacts with the alcohol-based ink, so it will bleed. So you just want to be inside your lines a little bit, okay? Don't, don't get too carried away with your Stampin' Blend when you're coloring an embossed image. Not to say you can't color it, but you just need to be a little careful. So I'm going to color her torso with the ivory. Stamp and blend. And then I'm going to markers, and these are water based, so not such a big deal. And I'm going to give her, she's going to be blonde, because in my world, she, mermaids are blonde. I thought about, she probably needs to have poppy parade hair. That would be what color a Disney mermaid would have, would be poppy parade. I think. And I could have done that, but it was just, it was too out there for me. I just could not do it. So I've colored her little hairs in So Saffron. And then I'll take a little balmy blue and color her headdress and her tail. She has a balmy blue tail. She could have a mint macaron tail. She could even have a fresh fig tail. It's your mermaid. You could color her tail however you want. But I liked the idea of a balmy blue tail. Bonnie Blue Tail. That is like Bonnie Blue. Hmm. It's like Bonnie Blue somebody rather. That was a nursery rhyme, yes? Little Bonnie Blue, somebody like that? Come on, somebody remind me. I'm not the only old one in the group, I'm pretty certain. All right, and then I'm going to take my um, Tranquil Tide marker and give her a tranquil tide tail. Again, this is water-based, so it doesn't have the reaction properties with the heat embossing, so you can kind of get busy. I would, however, suggest that when you're done with that, you kind of blot that little bit, because it's going to be on the embossing, and that's going to be uh, wet for a minute. Okay, so there she is, and I think what we'll do, let's do a real quick, real quick like a bunya. I'm going to take my clear wink of Stella and give her kind of a shiny tail. I mean, she's a fish, and all the fishes I know are shiny. I've never met a mermaid, so I'm not entirely sure if her body would be shiny, but I know for certain sure if her tail would be shiny. There we go. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. There it was. Bonnie Blue was, in fact, a little girl and gone with the wind. I don't know nothing about birth and no babies, Miss Scarlet. And poor Bonnie Blue's little pony. I never really forgave Rip Butler for that. That was not that pony's fault was not that pony's fault. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to use a little liquid glue and I'm going to adhere my mermaid princess to this front edge. Just like that. And I'm letting her overlap a little bit. Like that. Like that. Okay. All right, so now let us make our total bridge. I'm gonna take my, let that dry for a second. I'm gonna take some tear and tape adhesive and I am going to 
You have a cousin named Blue after little boy Blue. Good on you. I wonder if he knows that. Does he know that? So I'm just taking some pieces of tear and tape and I'm putting them on the end, just the ends of my bridge. Like this. Tear and tape adhesive is wonderful for things that need a little extra oomph in the adhesion department. So here's how you do this. Just go ahead and lay this flat like so. We're gonna figure out where we want him. I want him about right there like that. Okay, so lay it flat and line up the end that you have uncovered your tear and tape adhesive. Try to make it straight like that and you're just adhering it, see, to that panel. And then we're gonna open up the other side, like this. She says, as the tear and tape adhesive gets the best of the Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Story at 10. Okay, so then lay that down and lay it you want to kind of make sure it's as straight as you can get it and flat and these edges should line up over here because you made this five and a half inches long and then bing bada boom one each bridge card oh so easy and oh so peasy see when you break it down it's really not that hard is it okay now remember this little piece we made okay Watch what we're gonna do here. Quarter inch is what I made my little tabs, which is coincidentally just about the right size for a piece of tear and tape adhesive. If you don't wanna mess with your tear and tape adhesive like this, then make your tabs longer. So you could even probably go up to three eighths of an inch, but a quarter inch works for me because I don't mind trimming it and that gives a good solid coverage because again like the other piece like your bridge this is going to move a lot right so you want some good adhesion on it just put it on the other side as well okay now this is going to go right in the middle just like that but first, we're gonna put on a few decorations. Let's take a look at what we had. I made a whole bunch. This is the fun part. This is like the icing on the cake. Everybody likes the icing the best, right? Don't you? I mean, I like the icing the best. I like the icing the best. It's, it's, really, it's really quite reason I'm fat is because I like the icing the best. So what I did is I used the net die from under the C framelits and I cut a piece of um, Tranquil Textures DSP. And it had a crumb cake back and a Tranquil Tied front. And when I first made the card, I was gonna use the, the um, crumb cake. So that's how that would have looked. And that would have been okay, but it didn't appeal to me yesterday. It appeals to me more today. What do you guys think? Crumb cake or Tranquil Tied? I'm gonna go with Tranquil Tied. There's plenty going on and that Tranquil Tied kinda goes in a little better. So I'm just gonna use some liquid glue and on the edges. This doesn't get a lot of play, it just kinda sits there, so you can just kinda get the ends where there's stuff that could stick out. You don't want stuff to stick out, right? Okay. And we'll just stick him in there and I'm gonna use my tweezers. And we just stick him down to the back of the card, like so. Then my little octopus, chocolate, absolutely. Chocolate icing, chocolate cake. Ooh, you know what is good though? Except not for Amy, because she doesn't like coffee. Chocolate cake with coffee ice cream. I ice, cre ice cream, well yes, coffee ice cream. But I was trying to say coffee frosting. So remember my golden octopus? Okay, we're going to color him right quick before I get ahead of myself. 
I'm going to color him in soft sea foam. I'm just going to color the portions of him that aren't embossed. Because I'm pretty certain that if you're going to have a gold octopus, he's probably got a soft sea foam underbelly. Oh. Okay, here we go. I'm just giving him a color. Remember, this is water based, so it's easy to color your embossing. Okay. All right, Jean et al. I'm going to be using some dimensionals now. Feel free to count. I'm going to pop him on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And although he isn't going to move, I don't want him to be moving around at all, really. So I'm going to use a combination of big ends and little ends to get all of his little parts supported. When you have eight arms, you have to get a lot of support. Right? Right. We'll put one right there. And how about one right there? Okay. And then we're going to just pop him over our net. I love how this gives you a, a place to just put so many fun things. So there's lots to look at when people open it up. Uh, I love iced coffee. That's become my new vice, Sue. I just drink iced coffee like crazy. When I think about it, I try to make it decaf just so I don't feel like I've drunk 75 cups of coffee in a day because I can drink some iced coffee. All right, now we're gonna stick him in here. Kind of at a jaunty angle like that. Okay, now let us have a send a dollar. A send a dollar. A send a dollar. A dollar of send. And you know what? I'm going to cut me another one because I want a, a fresh fig center. Hang on just a second. Man, I do love this die set. It is just so much fun. Okay. Now, I'm just going to stick him in there where he goes. There he goes, that way. And I'm holding him together with some dimensionals. See? You see how that worked out? Just like that. A couple of dimensionals like so. And then I'm going to pop him over the seahorse. No, that is not a seahorse. Where in the world did I get seahorse? Any idea? No, I have no idea either. I'm going to pop him just like that onto the octopus. Okay, now we're going to add our center dude, little dude. I know, decaf, but it's... So let's just work through this. I have a regular cup of coffee in the morning, hot, with my one skosh tablespoon of creamer. And then I switch to iced coffee, so I have my Stampin' Up! tumbler of iced coffee mid-morning. Then in the afternoon, I have another iced coffee. And if I'm really being good, I switch to decaf for that one. But if I'm not, it's straight up. And then sometimes I even want to have one like later, like at 5. And if I were to drink a whole tumbler of straight coffee at 5 in the evening... I would not sleep. Okay, so I'm taking my little strip, and it's soft sea foam, but, and I think that's the best for this card because it kind of disappears. And I've just cut my, I've put my tear and tape. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it inside there like this. And I just want it kind of hidden behind my bridge, okay? And because you've made it the right size, it just sort of fits in there. And you can see it's a little bit bent, but actually that works for you. Because as you start to pile things in there, it gives a little more dimension. So let's see what we're going to do. I think we're going to use some of this coral, like this. And I'm going to put it on the front of the 
little strip with a little liquid glue. Just reach your finger in there and let it sit. And then I'm going to take some of this other little lacy coral in soft sea foam. And I'm going to put it on the back of the strip. It's all about dimension here, people. Little bits of dimension here and there. Okay. And while those are drying, we'll set that aside and make us a sentimente. A sentimente. Let's make a sentimente, shall we? All of a sudden, I am Italian. I don't know why. Okay, so for my sentiment, I'm going to use uh, the cute little birthday sentiment from Magical Mermaid, and we're going to do it in fresh fig with our stamp -a jig because I have already cut my sentiment strip. Okay. And this is just Whisper White. I am totally paying attention. I'm just ignoring you, Miss Cunders. Or oh, Miss Coenders. I'm just ignoring you, Miss Coenders. But yeah, it's true. It's a little it's a little hard to watch the comments and make this highly complicated card. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp that in fresh a fig, fresh a fig, and then do a little measuring. And we'll cut this end right there and make us a little banner, Bruce banner, like that. And that's actually about right. We'll cut a little bit off of the end. I might be ignoring you on purpose. Kinders. Amy Kinders. Amy Kinders. You, I suspect, are very much like me. If it starts with Amy, you just answer. It's like me. Married, death, or death, or death. Or, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. I'm married, death. And then I'm taking my fresh fig marker, edge in the sides, because I can. Now, y'all, my catalog shares are closed, in case you didn't see that. Today's the last day. You've still got until midnight. I'll give you midnight if you still want a catalog share. But after tonight, we're closed up for business. But my new in-color bundles are still available, in case you wanted them. And I think you should because it's a pretty good savings. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of dry fitting. I'm going to take a couple of these little seagrasses right here. We're going to put those right like so. Like that. With a little bit of liquid glue. A little bit of liquid glue. I don't know why I'd be ignoring you either, Amy. Can you even think of a reason? I can't hardly think of a reason. Use a little liquid glue on here. Come on, liquid glue, you're brand new. You're supposed to be cooperative. And we're gonna put him like so. And then we'll do a fresh fig one, a fresh fig. Again, I just can't believe that fresh fig works with these colors. It just amazes me and mystifies me also. But it does, it really, it really, really do. Okay, and then I'm going to use more liquid glue just on this end for my sentiment. Like that. Okay. Now, let us pile up another couple of little thingy bobbers, doohickeys if you will, right here, like that. Yes, I think that will be lovely. It will be just lovely. It will look like a complete and total saltwater aquarium that my brother would have had as we were growing up. All we don't have is Dory and Nemo. But we have the Little Mermaid, so I think we're getting there. Next time I make a Little Mermaid, I am making Poppy Parade for her hair. I'm pretty certain that would be correct. Get more like that. There you go. Okay. And then we'll just use some liquid glue here for our 
sand dollar. And then, because I didn't do it on the first one, but I really wished I'd had, I'm going to use a pink pearl right there. Okay, so you guys, when you make this, add a pink pearl. I think it's important. Okay, so there is the front of the card. Right quick like, we're going to put a back on. She says as she attempts to pick up. Ah, a rogue, a rogue stamp and dimensional cover. Who knew there could be such a thing as a rogue stamp and dimensional cover? All right, two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. Yes, yes, I also didn't cut this mat. Or if I did, I cut it up earlier, sorry. So you have to watch me cut again. What was that, two and seven eighths? Hmm? Hmm? Weren't you watching people? Yeah. All right. Two and seven eight. All right then. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. Now I'm gonna take where? What should we use? Let's use our sea grasses which appear to have just, oh no, they're right there in front of you, Mary. Mary, you silly girl. And we're gonna do that in some soft sea foam. Don't you just love this color? I love soft sea foam, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And we're not gonna do it on the mat, no. We're gonna do it on the white. I'm gonna stamp it off once. And then I'm going to stamp it right in the corner, like so. And then we'll just take one more balmy blue seagrass and adhere it on. Yes, it probably would be easier to write on this panel before I adhere it. Which is why I don't like to do it that way, Sue. I prefer to do things as hard as is humanly possible. It is actually possible to write on it afterwards because it does lay flat. You just have to, you know, write light, write lightly. Here, we'll put a little glue here because this, this one wants to stick up. You see what this is? This is what we call recalcitrant seagrass. You've seen it, you've heard it. I believe it's a result of pollution in the oceans. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, now we'll mat this on its little seafoam mat. But yes, if you were making this card to actually give um, as a written thing, this one will probably go out to a customer as a thank you at some point. But if this was a card I was making to give to someone for their actual birthday, then I would write on it right now. Right now. I'd write on it right now. Happy, happy birthday, I would say. <laughs> Patricia, that's funny. Do they spell it T-R-I-C? T-R-I-C? No, there's no poppy parade in this pack, Julie. That is a true, or Jane, that's a true statement. Um, you'd almost have to have her have fresh fig hair, but ooh, that would be weird. Maybe that's, maybe fresh fig is what happens to poppy parade hair when it gets old. That's probably what it is. Mermaid hair doesn't turn gray, it turns fresh fig. There we go. All right. So that can set aside for just a second. We'll add another seagrass and some DSP to the envelope. And we'll be done ya. We'll be done ya. Well, Julie, why would you have added an extra E at the end? How is anybody to know? The E is silent, so how can you know? I don't know. All right, this one is gonna be straight up i.e. not stamped off once because I like it like that 
And then we're gonna put some more of the pretty Tranquil Tide on the envelope flap. And don't forget my little tip, the one I learned late in the game. Slide that DSP down the envelope flap a little bit, especially when you know you've got a thick card going in it, like this one is. I'll show you what I mean. So it used to be, before I got smarter than I am now, I would put that right up against the edge, and that could be problematic. So now I've just cheat it down a little bit. I mean, we're talking like a sixteenth of an inch. Not very much at all. And when you have the big thick envelope or card in there and the envelope closes, you really can't tell that that has been done. So, big old fussy cut right here. You know, you guys, if you don't have Magical Mermaid or you don't want to fussy cut her, you could do this card without her. I think it's better with, but you could actually put, maybe you have a family of octopuses. Nobody's to say that it couldn't be a family of octopuses. You could make an octopus in the back and put an octopus here and do however you wanted to do. So here's what we got, people. One each, easy peasy bridge fold card. It lays down flat just like that to go in its A2 envelope. Beautiful Tranquil Textures cardstock and DSP and under the sea framelits with the Sea of Texture stamp set. I do hope you like it. It's uh, fun and I really hope you'll try to make one. Um, go back and watch how I did it and again, it's really, really easy. All right? Y'all, I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day tomorrow. Please thank a vet. Think of the folks that didn't come home and are still out there serving and keeping you safe tonight. See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.